We're gonna start our day off in the shop here. And we got two projects being worked on. Over here, we got Patrick and Nick, and Ian is uh, grabbing some tools. They're working on a shop-built staircase. And this staircase is gonna go into our project 169. We're gonna hit that today. Um, and if you guys followed along to our elliptical stair that we built, we built all of that on site. Uh, this time we decided, hey, let's build a temporary wall over in the corner here and see if we can build this thing in the shop. So Nick spent a better part of, you know, a few weeks putting together a design and now we're putting, utilizing our, you know, uh, Adobe over at Barney and Carey's helped us with the CNC and now we're fabricating all of these parts, basically looking at the most creative way that we can build this. Patrick, I'm going to steal one of these. So all of our white oak treads we're able to get uh, pre-manufactured. Nick found a supplier um, local to us, was able to grab the these for us. What Patrick's doing is he's actually installing the risers uh, to all of these treads. So what's gonna happen is we're building a housed stringer on the bench here. And what I mean by a housed stringer is that we're gonna actually router out a groove for our tread and riser. So that piece of poplar that's inch and a half thick is actually a, the, the outside stringer that is supportive, but also the finished product. So he'll take these and at some point, once these are routed, these will slip in just like that. And what's nice is, like I said, Patrick is uh, assembling these on the bench. You got screws here attaching to the tread, making sure that that seam doesn't open up. They've went ahead and already primed that, so if anything ever moves or shrinks, you're never gonna get this, uh, this, wood, this wood line. And then on the bottom side here, they've actually dadoed that out. So when you stack the next tread, that next tread will slip over this riser. And again, they've pre-painted this, so once that scotia is put on, uh, you have primer below the surface and you're not relying on, or you're not uh, running the risk of anything moving over time and then showing a paint line. So a lot of prefabrication here, but it's gonna make, make sure I'm not screwing Patrick up. It's got a system here. <clears throat> We're about a week into it. And then judging by what uh, chatted with Nick, next week we should have this staircase completely assembled over in this temporary area. Let's go walk over here for a second. You can see, th this is our temporary wall. You can see he's got his uh, drawings up here, material. And this actually, we actually have this, I'm gonna, it's not really a flitch beam, but if you guys remember our, our, the staircase we built in Watertown a couple years ago, it's a U-shaped staircase. This essentially is gonna go from our wall opening on one side to at the other side of the, the wall to carry the staircase. Uh, this is gonna be really hard to explain, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually stop there and maybe walk through it in a future episode. Uh, but just know that this is one of the structural beams and what we did is we took four layers of Advantech, glued them together, uh, and that's gonna give us our support to support the staircase so we don't need any additional uh, steel or any structure below it. Uh, let's go over and see what James and Ian are working on. These cabinets here are actually rework. We were on site, this is project 142. This conversation started as, hey, we have these kind of alcoves in the roof line that we wanna just make some simple cabinetry out of uh, for additional storage. And that's exactly how we took it. That's exactly how we approached it. Made some simple cabinetry and we started installing them. James had some trouble with, you know, kind of how they fit on site. We started walking through, well, how did we get here? Or what was the, the course of action? And realizing that we didn't take the same approach that we would on any other project because they were simple cabinets. Uh, ultimately, we all agreed that, you know, let's ignore the fact that we've already built these cabinets and approach this the way that we should. Uh, so we've rebuilt them. So these are the four, uh, one, two, three, four cabinets right here um, that will go and slip into a, a, an alcove, like I said, in the, uh, where the roof framing is. And this is actually where the rafters kind of kick in. They've built this box out and there's gonna be this flush door. So what James is working on here is he's got his sauce hinges being routed out. Uh, and that right there is uh, the, the cabinet four. So what's gonna happen is that door is gonna sit inset to these panels, and now you're gonna have a flush door ready for plaster. 
The detail that is not shown here is that this right here is actually gonna be face of plaster. James has one, thank you. And what we've done, and this is uh, you know, courtesy of Aaron over at Fine Line, but we've taken an aluminum um, regular detail, stop bead, whatever you wanna call it, we've actually cut off all the legs, sanded this down, and this is gonna get epoxied onto the panel on site and then we'll kind of just keep that slightly proud just so you can kind of feel it. Let the epoxy ooze out there. We'll put some screws in the face here all the way up. You can see that they've already pre-cut these as a miter. So that would be similar to that. And then this will get stapled to our blue board. We'll mesh tape over that and then plaster will come over, hit this, this, this metal corner bead and then this will get sanded flush with the epoxy and then this will be painted wall this will be painted wall and that will be a true seamless um, plaster to mdf cabinet um, connection point so that's gonna be a really cool detail inside of these cabinets will all be blended so it'll essentially look as though the plaster never uh never stops we're gonna head out to the job sites and see what's going on with the guys in the field. We're gonna get going now and see how many we can hit in today's site visit. So we are in Cambridge now. Today, it looks like Coleman's on site. HVAC guys are off site for a couple days. Brian just let me know that they've dropped off the Radiant Quick Track. This stuff is gonna start getting installed next week. So it's a big push today uh, to get a lot of this stuff up off the floor for the HVAC guys. Uh, and Coleman has been working through wiring and that's exactly what we're kind of coming to the tail end with as far as rough wiring. Uh, obviously you can see the wires pretty much everywhere. Uh, we get this detail here. Um, previously we talked about how we actually built this subfloor on top of an existing slab. Uh, we didn't have the opportunity and we actually couldn't run any of our wiring in the concrete. So we've channeled this out and what they've done is they put down nail plates uh, to protect this when we start installing our quick track and then eventually our wood floor here. But this gives us that channel to run our wiring into the island location. Actually see they've also prepped it for data. Uh, that way if they, if they wanted a data port uh, in the island it's all prepped uh, and ready. Um, but overall that's really where we're at with as far as mechanicals. We'll go upstairs and take a look at what's going on with HVAC. Uh, we'll poke back here as well. So the guys frame these stairs and they've worked with the electrician here. So we have some lighting that's going to go up the stairs. All of these stairs need to have lighting on them. Uh, and we have high ceilings, they don't want anything above and there's no recessed lighting. So this will be in the wall. Uh, and the guys did a really good job blocking everything out and locating all of these for the electrician uh, to make sure everything was evenly spaced. And what that does is, you know, us working alongside them, you know, allows for multiple people, multiple eyes to be sure things are in the right spot um, for the end result. So it's, uh, it's nice to see, you know, the time taken to make sure that that layout's spot on. Up here is a cool space. It's gonna be uh, an office, a ton of millwork. We'll get into that in a future episode. You'll see it on Revealed, you'll see it on Crafted, but a uh, ton of millwork up here. Um, and some funky and some funky really cool details uh, with this double wall here uh, on how our HVAC system is going to heat and cool this space up here um, but I always like taking this vantage point because you can kind of see looking down at to what we're what we're working with these huge exposed trusses are really cool uh, the painters were actually in here over our our holiday break to get these painted uh, one detail I wanted to talk about these timber ceilings, it's an existing timber ceiling, but they have all these seams in it. Now these are tongue and groove boards, but we were getting, they called it black rain. One of the, the neighbors called it black rain, is that when people walked up on top of that ceiling, stuff would fall down. So the painters actually went through and caulked every one of those seams, but did it really deep in there. So once it was painted, you actually couldn't tell that those boards were caulked, uh, but it protected any from any of that debris from falling down. Uh, but like I said, a lot of conduit work, exposed conduit, really important to be neat about it. So we made sure that our, you know, our junction points were bringing that conduit up tight against these beams and then run, run back. You can see it over here and you can see how it runs down. Uh, really intentional. That's really important to 
to us as well as the client. Um, why don't we hop on the other side and I'll show you what's going on with the HVAC. Actually, before we head over there, this right here is gonna be a future uh, workshop uh, in closet space. But you look above here, everything is framed out with a two by eight, except for this center section here, it's two by four. Reason is, and you see this line set hanging above, there's actually an air handler that's being tucked up into this ceiling space. Uh, very similar to the compact one we'll see over there, but this is showing how creative we had to be uh, with a lot of, you know, a lot of the space because we weren't, we simply don't have a lot of space to work with and every square inch really counts here. Didn't even realize this stuff was stacked up. This is huge. This is actually quiet rock. You can see it's made up of two layers and you have this layer in between. Uh, and the reason that we're using this is we're in a multifamily building. It's an old mill building. You know, soundproofing really isn't, um, you know, isn't the greatest, I guess we'll, we'll say. So quiet rock, this is actually a sound absorption layer. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what this core is. Uh, depending on the manufacturer, it depends, but this will help prevent the transmission of sound between the parting walls. Because to the left and to the right of me, we have uh, adjacent neighbors. And this will be our first layer, followed by a layer of acoustical glue, which is essentially a caulking membrane to sandwich the, the final layer of blue board, which will get our plaster base coat that we do here in Massachusetts. On this side, it's our primary suite. Uh, to, to the right here, or to your right, uh, is an elevator. So this is basically future proofing. We'll have a one-stop elevator from the entry up to here. Um, looking above, here's one of our air handler units, the compact unit. We're tucking that into, again, a tight space. You can see how you know, we're gonna have to add access to this space to service that unit, but we're utilizing every square inch to get these installed in a place that makes sense. Again, you can see how carpenters have worked to make sure everything is located exactly where it needs to be, including outlets. We're being really methodical on the way we approach things. Wood blocking, wood blocking, wood blocking. That really makes it, you know, again, we're, we're working together with our trades to make sure things are in the right spot, you know, because it's easy if, if there was no blocking there, you know, we're relying on the electrician to add blocking and get it in the right spot where it's like, let's work together and make each other's job as easy as possible. Flipped around here, we're looking into the primary bathroom. We have this access point up here. This will be another unit as well as the ERV. Uh, and here's the ERV down here. We're using a Renew Air Energy Recovery, recovery Ventilator. Let me see if I can show you guys kind of what this looks like. This actually does a good job. So I'm gonna do a elementary explanation of this, but essentially, if you follow my hand, if I'm taking the stale air, my stale air is coming through here and going through this core, and then it goes outside. So pulling the stale air out of the building and then shooting it outside of this core and going through there. This is a pleated core. So what happens is when you bring in fresh air this way, you pull the fresh air in, goes into the core, it crosses, it never mixes with air like this, but the temperature transfers through this ple the, the, pleated, um, the pleated core. The temperature and humidity being an energy recovery ventilator. A heat recovery ventilator, HRV would only transfer heat and that moisture would actually be um, dispersed into a condensate pump. But that fresh air would come into this core, cross over, and then be supplied to um, the, the space. And in here, what we're doing is we're actually supplying it through a trunk that runs along one of the beams down below. Um, I'm sorry, let me back up. That's, that's where the exhaust is coming from. This is being supplied to the HAC units to dump fresh air uh, through the existing, or the proposed ductwork for the heating and cooling. All right, last thing I want to point out uh, before we head over to our next project is I'm going to stand back because I just they just yelled at me for saying that this thing's live. Uh, they got a cover for it. They have it taken off right now. Uh, but the way everything is labeled and this is huge because, you know, number one, seeing this, you can see the care that's put into it, but also for future proofing, 
you know, if something gets mislabeled or there, there needs to, you know, something happens to the label, everything has been, you know, labeled right here. What they do is basically leave a piece of that Romex. You can see this right here. And that's gonna be for the water filter. Um, stuff like that just makes a big difference. It just, it, it's nice to see that put together. Again, carpenters made sure that they had solid blocking. It really comes down to working together uh, and making sure that we're supporting each other and thinking about the next trade. Let's head over to our next project and we'll go from there. All right, we're gonna head over to project 174. It's a small two bedroom condo that we're doing in Beacon Hill. Project 174. Tim and Coop, Cooper are on site here. Uh, I've, I've shown this every time I've walked in the site visit, but it's still one of our favorite features. And every time we walk through, um, it really just invites you right into the space, which is exactly what we wanted to do. It, it drives you right into here. Uh, again, tight, tight site. Uh, I think it's just around 700 square feet, if I remember right. Um, you can see a lot of the cabinetry has been installed. Everything's been plasticed up just so we're not getting dust and things on it. Um, this is what I was talking about here is we have these two uh, freezer and refrigerator. Um, I don't even know if they're called columns because they're below the, the, the counter, but everything is below the counter. Uh, so we don't have this large column right here is that pantry I was, I was talking about. And what I was talking, the detail I was talking about is that this door here swings against the wall and the second door, which normally would swing this way, is actually attached to this door with saw hinges, concealed hinges. So the door full, uh, s swings this way and then folds against itself. And the reason we did that is, you know, most of the time you're gonna be working over here. And if you're walking over to this cabinet, you don't really wanna walk around a door. You can kind of think of it like that, right? If this door is open, you, you, it's just, I don't like that. You're kind of wa not walking into it, but you are walking into it. So here, when that door opens, everything folds this way. It doesn't protrude out too far. You're not doing one single door that ends up way out here, folds against itself. It worked out really, really well. Um, we're waiting for ca uh, countertops. They were templated, um, but we did leave just about a 16th so we can get that stone in, shim it from underneath the cabinets, and then get that tight to all of our uppers. Um, overall, sink here oven here uh, we got a, a, a recirculating range hood there big countertop space here island here yes we have an all-in-one lg um, washer dryer combo in the island because we didn't want to waste any closet space elsewhere uh, and then we had rich uh, from costa fabricate these steel brackets that are going to hold that are going to support the end of the two islands in which will get painted to match the steel column but what we're doing today we're working on interior trim. So Tim and Cooper, they're working on, I, I said that we'd have some kind of chunky casing. This is from Cucan Brothers. Uh, it is KB102, um, really nice profile. Is this four and a half inches? I believe so. Yeah, so four, four and a half inch wide. Oftentimes, and we see this when we, when we don't think about this stuff early on, we knew what the selection was. And what happens is this casing gets slammed up against the wall and it just doesn't it doesn't number one look good in my opinion it gets hard for the baseboard to scribe into that that bottom and overall you just kind of lose the 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 detail of that casing because there's nothing to reference on this back side when that thing gets cocked into to the wall so rather we make sure that we set our doors up so we have this space here uh, even though it's gonna be a pain for the painters to get in there to, to paint it. The baseboard can tuck behind it and it looks intentionally thought out and it gives you this defining edge for that casing. If you guys remember from a previous site visit, we talked about these, these hidden doors. Uh, and, and one of the reasons, and I'll just kind of reiterate here, is that short wall, and this is kind of a, utilitary closet, a, ut a utility closet, and we didn't want two doors side by side, it just gets too busy. Uh, a lot of these walls are going to be wallpapered, so we decided to do a hidden door here. So your focal doors are your bathroom, your bedroom, and your second bedroom slash office. Uh, and that one will get wrapped in wallpaper and be hidden, designed uh, also for it to go, for the baseboard to go right underneath that door so it swings right above that. Top in here, primary bedroom in here. Windows have all been removed. We're actually doing, uh, restoring them. A lot of you guys have asked, why don't we just replace them? We're in Beacon Hill, it's a historic neighborhood. 
Um, there is this process in which you have to get approval for the windows that you use for replacement. We did another project for this client up the street uh, just a couple years ago, and they refused to let us use insulated glass. Don't ask me why. I don't agree with it. Uh, I think there's ways that we can use insulated glass in a historic manner that still looks good and doesn't impact it. But that's the rules and we have to kind of play with that. And we, yes, we could kind of go through the motion of fighting it, but it doesn't make sense. It usually takes a really long time. So we've chosen to take out these sashes, work with a local contractor who specializes in restoring them, replacing broken glass, kind of reglazing them and things of that nature. And then we'll, and then we'll um, utilize the storm windows for that double layer. Um, and these will look basically brand new once they go in. And of course, all of our casing goes on. Uh, and then over here, living room here. So what Cooper's working on is this double door. And this double door is in the quote unquote second bedroom, but also office. And what this is allowing us to do is essentially open these two doors up and have this flowing space. So it's not totally closed off. It gives it this sense of uh, openness and allows this room to feel bigger by incorporating that space. Uh, when the doors are closed, they're actually glass. So it still allows a lot of that light to flow through. Uh, if that was a closed off wall, it would just feel a lot more cramped. Uh, behind here, you see that other hidden door that we talked about, same thing. It's a utility closet. We don't wanna call attention to it. So there's no need to have a normal door on it. Uh, existing radiators were actually restored, put back on. A lot of you guys ask about our protection. So right now, obviously the floor is covered in uh, Rambo, but there are areas that aren't covered. The floors aren't done yet. So we do have one additional uh, screen and coat on these floors, um, but we obviously do our best to, to protect them you know, while we're working. Uh, the reason that we stained and put that first coat on is so underneath the baseboard, because the baseboard is being installed after, uh, it's coated and it's protecting the floor so you don't get that. If anything shrinks, you don't get this raw wood look. They started with hanging doors. They'll go into casing, baseboard, and then crown molding will be really the, the, the icing on the cake per se. And that crown molding actually ties into our uh, cabinetry crown molding, which is the same profile. Speaking of which, um, even though we framed the ceiling, we realized that we had some discrepancies in ceiling height, uh, you know, pluses and minuses. So when it's within you know, a sixteenth of an inch, we would consider that a cockable joint where we can go back, we can cock that and we paint the ceiling to that cock joint uh, to the crown molding. Now there's a couple areas where it's an eighth inch plus. So what we'll do is we'll actually pull out those recessed lights and we'll actually mud up to the crown molding, screening that discrepancy out. So we're actually building the ceiling down at the crown molding to, to, to tighten that gap. Uh, we certainly don't want an eighth inch 316 or, or larger gap of caulking uh, because it just kind of ruins that that profile uh, my 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 general um, preference is to keep the cabinetry down from the ceiling and have this defining line uh, but in here it did make sense especially with crown molding running through the rest of the space so that's about it here uh, for this week these guys are going to keep going on interior trim uh, and next time we check in here we should be right through uh, pretty much through the interior trim and we'll start rolling into some of uh, the additional finishes. So let's head over to our back bay project, project 142, check in on how the plaster is going and also show you guys some of the glass details that have been installed since our last visit. All right guys, we are at project 142. I'm gonna call this our flagship job because this has been going on for well over a year. There's an, an immense amount of detail that goes into every step of the way. Um, and one thing that I'm standing on right here is this walkable skylight. Uh, this was a big feature in, in this project. Uh, we just got our, this uh, staging tower down so you can see it. You can see the amount of natural light that comes down. We're not gonna head up there today because it's icy and it's freezing out, but that skylight actually sits flush with our pavers on the roof deck completely walkable so when you're standing here people can actually walk across it it's totally comfortable to it you don't actually think about it because of the flush nature of it uh, but you can see here we actually have our glass in as well with our mono stringer we have some fan fold insulation pre uh, preventing any damage to it which is that pink stuff but these are single sheets of glass we're not doing small sections these came in single piece we craned them up to the roof and we've attached them that mono stringer, you see all these stand, uh, these these clips that hold the glass on the side of the mono stringer. Those don't remain exposed. We actually have the grain matched white oak caps that go on the end, so it looks as though those treads run through the glass. Um, I apologize about my my speech today. I'm obviously 
running low. Uh, We've walked through this before, but all of the structural channel for the glass is buried into the floor system, buried into the wall system. We'll get up the top and we'll look at it. In the wall cavity, we've sprayed black, so when that glass goes in and it gets plastered against it, you're not seeing any of the framing or any, anything inside that cavity except for blackness, uh, and which is really nice because when all said and done, you'll see it kind of a uh, sneak peek over at the main stair. This is going to look just like glass with no clips, no structure really, really clean. Um, but let's, let's go over to the main staircase because they've been working really hard on these details. We really put a lot of forethought into the details, especially when it comes to plaster. You have this sheet of glass here, single piece, very difficult to get in, you had to slide it in and then slide it into what right here is actually a steel uh, C channel with an aluminum uh, U channel that supports the glass. So again, no structure is exposed supporting this glass. On top of that steel C channel, is a aluminum U-channel that supports this glass. The glass is dropped in to that U-channel and then pour rocked in place, so it's, it's permanent. But this glass, this glass, and the glass at the top of this staircase are all in line as if a piece of glass kind of slid down and then you know divided up into three sections. It was really important to keep those aligned uh, just for consistency. Now let's talk about this stringer. It's designed to look just like it's going to be plastered, number one on the outside. Um, the guys at Van Gerven were able to source this essentially aluminum cap that will tie into the blue board, get plastered, and they've actually detailed this single piece um, and cut this around as the aluminum cap. So all of this will be painted white. And it, when you're standing back, it just looks like an, uh, a white beam that rests on that four to five inches of white oak tread never really understanding what went into making this, you know, the detail that it is. Um, you know, things, you know, th things like getting this in one single piece rather than splicing it or having seam that you had to deal with. You know, the guys were talking about how they had to essentially slide this thing in and prevent, you know, slide it down over the glass, preventing any scratching and things like that. Um, you know, if we flip around here, same thing with this one. This one's even more difficult single piece all the way down it's it's wrapped around the glass and goes all the way up you turn around here doug you know they got this hole here and you know originally they had thought if they cut that hole they can kind of move maneuver this around and in uh, but steve actually just let us know that he had to cut this board take this board down shove it up in the wall and was able to get it down and over a couple of the details you know up here you know when this all gets plastered there's actually going to be this really intentional 1 16 uh, gap between this beam and the ceiling to allow this to move separately from this, but also creating this um, separation. You know, on the back side here, we have our, uh, you know, our wall, uh, our wall stringer essentially, uh, which is flush with plaster. You have this half inch uh, shadow bead that matches our baseboard, goes up underneath the, the top tread. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to run a stop bead from this shadow bead straight across uh, and that will allow this ceiling to have an intentional stopping point but align with this um, and again when all this is plastered this will be flush with the this this stringer and everything painted the same so when we go around here let's talk about some more details this quarter inch reveal is essentially allowing this plaster to come up and have an intentional stop and then we have our oak flooring that let me uh see if i can get this there we go so you can see our oak flooring goes right into the floor again that floor is that glass is buried into the floor there's no structure exposed so again this has to be all coordinated as to what goes first and when uh, and this gives us the intentional stop for plaster gives us a nice intentional shadow bead all the way across Let's see if i can keep that back now we take this reference point and make sure that that is plumb with the, with the, the, uh, the top of the beam for that staircase. Again, a reference point that's really important. This is gonna be our leading edge of plaster. That's our leading edge of plaster. That plaster is gonna go down and then transition down into this beam. So this side is gonna get padded out and they'll stop beat around each tread individually. Again, leaving that really nice, tight, intentional line. You're not trying to push plaster up against 
uh, a dissimilar material, and that's really important to us. We turn around here, our handrail brackets, all stainless steel. This will be a stainless steel handrail coming down. Um, typically, you see the escutcheon on top of the plaster. Um, there's other ways to go about it, but what we've done here is we've installed this escutcheon to the framing, um, and this right here is just your traditional metal stop bead, and we've cut it and pushed it tight up against these um, handrail brackets all the way around so we can plaster to that. The reason we put these in after is so they could straight edge this entire wall and make sure it's completely flat before these handrail brackets became a nuisance and, and became uh, a point where they, they couldn't straight edge things. Now they can reference this plaster to this plaster and then set that stop bead to make sure that this ends up exactly where the stop bead is. All the way, I'm, I'm not uh, going to do a good job, but there we go. So when they screwed that plaster and it stopped at that stop bead, that's completely flat with each other. Um, again, it's a coordinating detail. It, it's, you know, it's the, it's, this is what we're, we talk about when we're talking about how, you know, when you try to do things with a minimum, you know, minimal details and, and contemporary details and minimizing, um, you know, these moments. And, and at the end, this is going to look like a very simple detail, very, um, simple in, in, in the nature of no complex fasteners or, or escutcheons, but the effort it takes to get there is actually quite complex. So last area I want to kind of show, again, here's another great example of how big this glass is. Here to here, this glass is one piece, again, buried into the wall, so you have to think it's buried into the wall here, so when this gets dropped into the channel, it actually has to go back, drop in, and slide in. So, you know, those are things that we had to consider and leave out. You're not going to be able to see it right now, but this and these here had to be let out and removed so this glass could drop in, slide over, and then all of these pieces of wood could be installed so you weren't in a position where you couldn't get it into the wall. And you can see here the stop bead's been installed. If you look through there, everything's been painted black. So again, this can be plastered, plastered. And when you're looking at a diagonal, it's just black. Last area I wanna talk about, we're kinda of up near that skylight here. Uh, again, you can see how much natural light's pouring down and in very minimal frame. All that black that you're looking at is actually the buildup of the five layers of glass. Um, and that's not a frame. So when you're down below, it's strictly glass. If you guys remember back, you know, a few months ago, this skylight was built by another manufacturer that what it, and it wasn't thermally broken and we were dealing with conden uh, condensation issues. We found a, a manufacturer, glass flooring systems that built us a thermally broken one. Uh, and at that time, we actually repositioned this to make sure that our reveal left, back, and right were all consistent with each other. Um, again, it's these, these, these minor things that make a big difference. Uh, and you, of course, you see our HVAC diffuser down there for our high velocity system, custom made. We talked about that in a, a previous site visit. Um, you know, gr a great detail. Uh, and then our last section of glass, we're actually missing this one, had to be remanufactured. Um, but on both sides of the mono stringer here, you can see all of the, the bracket details. Um, this one's wrapped up, Doug. But over here, you can see how everything is built up and connected. Um, and then not only that, but you have this, this lower panel to this panel completely flushed out with each other uh, and making sure that that, you know, again, stays aligned with each other. It's really important, these, these are the things that matter. The reason actually this piece got uh, recut is because what Nick detailed is that you have this tread end here, and this piece of glass actually has to notch around this one tread uh, to keep our corner uh, really tight, and that corner is gonna be designed to be right here. Uh, so you have this really clean corner, no overlapping glass. You know, it, it's, it's, it's designed to be, again, uh, minimalistic.
All right, so in the shop this morning, we talked about those cabinets that we chose to redo. Uh, and these are actually the areas that we're talking about. Um, they, we actually have already taken the cabinets, the, the original cabinets out. Um, but you can see that here's the mansard roof and we have this wall built in to basically flush everything out. And originally we just kind of plopped some boxes in there and we were gonna have regular hinges and a cabinet door that shut that would hopefully flush out with everything. Um, but instead we have new boxes going in that you'll see in a future episode where we're gonna mud flange, uh, like I showed you in the shop, into the, excuse me, into the plaster. So this plaster will get chipped out and they'll replaster that, giving it this seamless plaster to uh, cabinet box look uh, without these unnecessary steps. So you have two here. Those are your white oak drawer boxes that we're, got, we're able to reuse, thankfully. And then you have two over here as well. And again, it's, it's these things that, you know, it kills us to have to redo work and have to, uh, I mean, last year, if you guys hadn't listened to Brad from AFT, uh, he had me on his podcast and I actually uh, divulged probably a little more information than I usually do about how much we spent in rework. Uh, so give that, that episode a listen if you'd like. But it is, it, this costs us money. This isn't something we can build with a client, but ultimately that's not what this is about. This is about doing our very best work everywhere, including these cabinets that probably will be opened once or twice a year to house extra pillows or Christmas decorations or things of that nature. We still want that experience to be the same. So I'm glad you guys get to see what they look like now. Um, and then in a future episode, you get to see what they look like going in. We'll capture that uh, detail as far as how we're gonna make that transition from MDF to plaster. Uh, and then of course the final reveal will be where it's all worth it um, because that's always how it is. So now we can go, uh, like I said, we're gonna head over to our last stop project 169 in South Boston where the framers are working on wrapping up framing. We have the plumbing and electrician, uh, electricians working through rough, but I made a major skylight change in location and I wanna walk you through why I did that uh, and the result that I'm after. So let's head over there. So we are at, in South Boston at our Project 169, and this is a third floor primary suite renovation. Uh, essentially, this was an existing couple of rooms up here, and what we're doing is renovating it into an awesome suite. Uh, first things first, this behind me, while it looks closed off and it's dark, is actually a pretty epic view of uh, the uh, Dorchester Bay uh, and actually faces south where the, the sun path is. So in the morning, this is the bedroom. You're gonna get this awesome sunrise across this, uh, you know, it's actually a four panel door. Uh, the outside panel is being stationary, so the two inside will open up. We'll actually be doing a Juliet balcony here. If you guys remember from our Newton project, Juliet balcony, those doors open. You have a railing right in front. So you don't actually step out there, but you get that sense of um, being on a balcony. Now we're in the thick of rough right now. There's a ton going on. Like I said, tight space, uh, open cavity. So we're gonna be a little bit careful. But a couple of things I wanna talk about is, number one, we've had to really restructure a lot of things. Uh, the mansard roof was framed and structurally doesn't check out on framing. So we've actually removed all of the framing and the guys have done a really good job of restructuring the ceiling as a structural component to what was going on and allowing the walls to strictly be partitions. Um, another thing that we ran into over here, Doug, is that these window bays, these are dormers, and what you're looking at is the back side of our sheathing, one inch sheathing, and siding is right on the back side of that. There was no insulation in these. So what Larry's working on over in that one, we'll go over there in a second, they're actually padding these out uh, with two by on the flat to get some insulation in here. Uh, but what they're doing is they're making sure that they're, they're doing it in a manner that you know, when all of this is plastered, we have this really consistent reveal around the window. That is absolutely key and necessary. So you can actually see this one is a full two by. This one looks like it's actually been scribed a little smaller. It goes up to maybe an inch here and grows as it goes down. But that's so we have this consistent uh, uh, reveal all the way around the window. Another thing is we've added the, the knee wall. Uh, and the, the way that we figured out where that knee wall height was gonna be is we figured out our, windows, our, our window stool height. And we took this window stool height and ran it all the way around the room. And now that knee wall goes right there. So you're gonna have a seam in the plaster right here. And that seam in the plaster is gonna hit right, side, right bottom side of our window stool, which is again, an intentional detail that we, we have to make sure that we hit. 
uh, Luke over here is standing and holding up the wall for the, the fireplace. Um, we have an awesome fireplace right here. It's gonna be a modern detail. We're actually gonna lime plaster this. Uh, we're gonna be working with Colby over a trowel plaster and this will be a lime plaster and then a bookcase uh, built into this niche to the side. Uh, and the guys have actually, if you look up here, they frame this uh, reveal and we'll use that for the heat release. So any of the heat release from the fireplace uh, will actually go up and out this nice reveal detail. You've seen us do that on other fireplaces. We have this ladder well. So this ladder well is just temporary. Behind that is rigid insulation that is covering up a future staircase um, that we that we talked about in the shop this morning that uh, Ian and Patrick are working on. This used to be the old staircase. We've closed it in enough to, to get started, but this will completely be closed in. And this is going to become a coffee station. Yes, a coffee station up in the bedroom. So you don't have to go all the way down to the first floor. Uh, you can make your coffee right in the morning. Over here, Larry's, this is Larry's cut station, AKA a giant uh, primary closet. So we're gonna be turning that into a, you know, a ton of custom millwork. And then in here, the bathroom. Like I said, a lot going on, there's stuff everywhere. The guys assured me that this place was spotless uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, but bedroom, big double vanity. We've already built this in the shop. If you guys, I think we did a revealed episode on this vanity. Um, so you guys can check that out. Really cool, uh, modern uh, white oak vanity. Same detail here, this one's actually complete. You can see how they frame the ceiling down, frame the walls and get this nice consistent reveal. And this one is all prepped for our window stool. In the bathroom here, we're gonna be doing th these out of stone. So you can see, you turn around here, Larry's working on this one, getting this framed out. We'll do a stone top there. And then we got Liz, who's always shy to be on camera. Um, she's sitting on the future shower bench. Um, so that shower bench right there is tucked in that, that mansard roof. Um, we had to kind of figure out what was going to be a comfortable height. And again, you can look at our subfloor detail. You know, this is a curbless entry and everything gets pitched back, pitched back down to a lower subfloor down here. And of course, we talked about this at the previous job is we have the, the, the drain on site. We made sure we took that drain and that it was going to fit from shower bench right to wall. So when everything is tiled, you get that nice consistent eighth inch reveal all the way around. Now electricians are downstairs working on wiring. We got a ton of the wiring in place. We've had tremendous, uh, I don't wanna say difficulty, but uh, it was a complex plumbing uh, situation here. We're on the opposite side of the house where the plumbing stack is. So we had to do some really complex uh, plumbing and, and change of the stack. We also saw, unfortunately found some uh, plumbing changes that were made previous to us arriving that we had to open up the wall. Uh, and specifically what I'm talking about is PVC that was that had cast sitting on top of it. Uh, so once you switch to PVC, you cannot have cast. We had to open up some of the walls, replace that uh, cast iron. But now we're in a position where if they ever do some future uh, projects, everything has been replaced PVC all the way up to the roof. Next week we have HVAC uh, and I told you guys I was going to talk about the skylight. This is what I'm talking about. The staircase is going to go in here and we want some natural light above here. Now we need to utilize some of the space for the air handler unit that's going to feed this floor and the second floor for, with heating and air conditioning, but we want to get a skylight in this place. So we've talked about kind of positioning where that's going to be. We talked about positioning it in the, 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 the center both ways of this, this room and just realized looking up, we have this hip rafter, we're gonna get really tight. It's gonna to be tough to flash it up on the roof. So one of the modern details that I really love is when you wash a wall with natural light. And you basically what I'm getting at is if I push that skylight all the way against the wall and that light pours in, it's gonna shine that entire wall up. Um, we talked about pushing it in this back corner and actually right before we filmed this video, we chose to kind of change that. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna center it in the stairwell opening and push it all the way against this closet wall here. So when you're looking, when you're standing in, in this space, that wall is gonna continue all the way up to our skylight. And what that's gonna do is allow that wall to be washed with the sunlight coming through the skylight. It's about 55 inches long, and we're gonna come down 90 degrees off the skylight. So as light pours through, you're basically pitching that light and helping draw that light on an angle down across the staircase. 
Another nice thing about pulling it off the wall a little bit is that when you're on the first floor, you're gonna get this view of the sky and view of the light. Now, like I said, I, I originally wanted to push it in two corners to get this really dramatic effect of washing two walls. And then I was gonna frame across the, the, the entire opening and create this really massive opening. But what I failed to realize was that we needed some space for mechanicals. And Luke here told me that I was a little crazy. So we fixed that, we came up with a better plan. Uh, and we're in good, in, in good space to do this, uh, but we'll get the HVAC guys on site Monday. And by the time we check in with this next, we should be all complete with our mechanicals. You'll probably see uh, not only the skylight go in, but the staircase be in a position where we can hoist it up and you're gonna to want to stick around for that. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching this week's episode of Site Visit. Obviously a new format. Let us know by uh, tagging the timestamp below of what part of this episode that you enjoyed the most. We'd love to hear that feedback. As always, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications, and we will see you next week. Just lost my train of thought. I was just gonna say something about the casing. Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. Oh, I remember.